I had this gift and I was willing to use it. That's what I had. I had the willingness to do the thing. Hey there, this is Patrice Washington from patricewashington.com, where we chase purpose, not money. Welcome back to another episode of Redefining Wealth. If you are brand new here, here's what you need to know. We are a community of purpose chasers, and we believe in the original 12th century definition of wealth, which says it's all about the condition of well-being. It's not so much about just money and material possessions as the world would have you believe. And so each and every week, we seek to unpack what that really looks like by using our six pillars of wealth. If you want to know more about those, head to patricewashington.com forward slash start here. PatriceWashington.com forward slash start here. You get access to a free audio training that breaks down the six pillars of wealth and it even has a mini assessment so that you can figure out what pillar you need to start with in order to start to improve your finances from the inside out. Before we jump into this week's episode, it's brought to you by Created for Purpose. It's my free five-day challenge that is all about helping you get unstuck around how your gift and the marketplace are supposed to come together purposefully. If you know anything about me, you know that my career was built in a time like this, and I fumbled my way through this online game so you wouldn't have to. So instead of you YouTubing and Googling and piecemealing all the things together, I'm going to teach you in that five-day live challenge how to prevail online and thrive even in turbulent times. To sign up, head to patricewashington.com forward slash challenge. Again, that's patricewashington.com forward slash challenge. We begin on December 7th and I want you to be there because I believe you were created for purpose, with purpose, on purpose. So let's do this. So excited to get back into our special series this week. It's all in honor of National Entrepreneurship Day, which is November 19th. But I think we should do it all week because I love celebrating the women in my communities. And this community in particular is Purpose to Platform. And there are so many great stories, great testimonies of women who have just been through some real stuff and have been able to use it to propel themselves in their purpose. And today's story is no different. We're going to dig right in to Lacey Field's story. I'm super excited because Lacey has been a rock star in Purpose to Platform, mostly because of how she has shown up and supported so many of the other women in the program. And so what you should know about Purpose to Platform, it is true community. We really do support each other. We do really get to know one another. I mean, and when I say we, the ladies really get to know one another. um, And it's just really, really incredible to watch them embrace this idea of sisterhood from day one. So without further ado, Teen mom turned course mentor Lacey Fields created her award-winning mentoring program, You Go Girl, 10 years ago in her basement. After years of mentoring teen girls, designing youth curriculum, and helping other women do the same, Lacey is now using her curriculum design skills to help purpose-driven women create transformational courses using their story. Equipped with her own story of triumphing over trauma, Lacey has not let her past stand in her way. Earning degrees and certificates in the fields of marketing, human services, coaching, holistic therapies, and presently clinical mental health, Lacey is more than prepared to complete her mission of helping women use their stories to transform lives. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Lacey Fields. Welcome to the Redefining Wealth Podcast, Lacey. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) I'm so excited to have you for so many reasons. So first of all, you are a student, currently a student in Purpose to Platform, but you are like, you the truth, Lacey. You are the truth. I am so excited to watch how you continue to evolve day after day. You are quick. Like, I can't really keep up. I just try to keep up with your Facebook posts and 
get an idea of what's going on. But it has been so incredible to watch because I didn't just meet you in Purpose to Platform. I actually met you. Now, I met you in person a long time ago, right? Yes. Where did we first, how did you first find me? Let's start there. Okay. So I first found you because I was volunteering with Lisa Nichols and I met your husband. And I seen they asked me to come and help with some course sales for Steve Harvey at Essence. And so when I got the Essence, I seen uh, Gerald and I said, hey, and he was like, my wife is here. I was like, I'm tuning all the way in, you know, and at that moment I was like, oh, I met him to meet her. And then I started following wow. him ever since. It was Essence, I'm thinking like 14, 15. It had to be. Lacey, did you know I never knew that? I had no. no idea that you met Gerald first. No idea. Gerald is not as good with names as I am. So he would never have put that together for either one of us. No, I had no idea. That's incredible. Yes. And so you saw me speak at Essence then? Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Was it main stage or was it the breakout session? No, you were main stage. It's a part of that story that you tell. I was a witness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Oh, wow. That is several years ago for sure. So I thought that we met at an event a couple years ago, but I knew for sure that you were a purpose chaser because I always remembered your name, that you supported the podcast. And then I saw you at my girlfriend's event in Atlanta where I was speaking and I had a little purpose chaser like meet up afterwards. And every time I see you, it, and like me, doesn't matter what your hair looks like. <laughs> no, <laughs> Didn't, right? It never mattered what your hair looked like. I'd be like, Lacey Fields. And you're like, yeah, I don't know why, but I always just knew. And I would be like, she know me. <laughs> <laughs> so something that really touched my heart is because you are committed to helping women in particular seems like share their story own their story so that they can create their courses and their work in the world but we have to go back because you didn't come to purpose to platform for that that evolved so I want to go back because I remember the day that you posted in the Purpose Chaser group that you were not comfortable sharing your story. And we were one of the first places that you actually shared. Can you take us back? What was the story you shared and why was that so uncomfortable for you? Yeah. So the story that I shared, and oh goodness, it was really God was like, you're going to have to do this in order to move forward. And I shared the story of catching a felony at, as a teenager like soon as I hit adulthood and having to maneuver through life with, you know, with that on my record and trying to get into corporate, having to start businesses and support my children, it was like an uphill battle and no one knew. No one knew for years. And I was like, okay, I have to tell this and where am I going to do it? Okay, I'm going to do it here. And so I did it in a purpose chaser group. And well, what made you say I have to tell this? Like what was happening? Because you've been able to navigate successfully, have a successful career and all this stuff and start a nonprofit and you do so much in the community. How were you able to navigate for so long without sharing it? And then what was the thing that was stirring in you that made you say, now I have to? Yeah. So, goodness gracious. I just knew that I had to show up as myself at every turn. And that's what helped me. I have used all of my natural gifts and abilities to get me in every door that I walk through. And I was tired. I was tired of like fighting, right? It was like all my life I had to fight and I was done, <laughs> okay? I went on like a sabbatical. I deleted my Instagram. I was off of social media for like a year and I went into like deep prayer for a whole year. And when I came back on, when God released me from that and I came back on social media, the first post that I seen was a friend of mine um, in my hometown where I'm from say that they were changing the laws and offering adults pardons and expungements. That was the very first post that I saw. Wow. Yeah. And so I knew my life was about to change and it was time for, I, I felt released. I felt free before it even happened. And I was like, okay, it's time. 
it's, it's time. And once I did it, the ball just really start rolling from there. So you posted in our group. So what made you post in the Purpose Chasers group of all places? Uh, because, you know, it was like... I felt comfortable there. I don't know. I'm not. And then it wasn't Facebook, right? We had Slack at that time. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it here. And I I really felt comfortable. And when you say that your gift is creating safe spaces, that's what I felt. Mm -hmm. And that's why I chose your group. And the love, the love that all the women gave to. Yeah. Like it was instantly, like, I just remember the thank yous. I had to put my little notifications on Paul's. I said, okay, Lacey in here blowing up the group. They were like, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. But really, I was really just touched that you felt like it was a safe enough space to share without judgment. Fast forward, I opened the doors to Purpose to Platform. And you came into Purpose to Platform to do what? Yeah, to bring my nonprofit online and monetize that program. Like, that's what I was like, oh, COVID, let me put a business online. Oh, this is it. This is what I got. That's not what happened. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) (laughs) What happened was P2P happened. And those questions that you ask us, let me tell you something, Patrice. The question that was like, what gift are you downplaying? I was downplaying it so bad that I only wrote three words. Like I had a whole attitude with this, right? It was like, write curriculum, talk, boom, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, I started sharing, oh yeah, you know, I help people write curriculum. I wrote all these nonprofit programs, girl, I'll help you. And then it was like, ding, 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 Uh, ma'am, that thing you're downplaying, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I love about Purpose to Platform is that many people have come in with one idea of what they thought they were going to do because you come in and you think she's going to teach me some marketing and she's going to tell me how to take this idea I already had and go do the things. And then you get in there and we really go deeper into purpose. Like, but what are you really supposed to do? Right. What is God really saying to you? (laughs) Right. It's really like those questions pop off with eyes on you as you're answering them. It's like, tell the truth now. (laughs) You know what you're supposed to be doing. And that and that's how I felt. And I took a I had to take a break from that too, right? I took a whole week off and started like dissecting my story, my own story, and saying, where does this fit in? And it was everywhere. It was everywhere through from the beginning, from 10 years old. It was everywhere. And had I not done the work, if I would have skipped, skipped over those questions and not done, the, I, God, I'd still be in there trying to figure something out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but they provoked me to really get into purpose and not worry about anything else. And to do something where you are not worried about, oh, how much is this going to make me? What is this going to do? What all do I need? And it's just like, oh my God, I just, oh, I could just do this. Ah, la, la, la. I could just do this. And- without, the, without the strife and the struggle. Like, because once you're clear, that's what clarity does though. It's, and it's not just being clear. It's then also accepting the call. Like the problem is we don't want to accept it. So you knew talk, write, and curriculum, but for years, you probably just dismissed it and you didn't want to accept that that could be the thing. And that's what we do. We want it to look sexier, look like so-and-so's, and all the while, it's just under our nose. Yeah, we want it to look like what we want it to look like and not being willing to just let it ride, to just let it ride. And as someone who has struggled her whole life, I was like, this is the easiest thing ever. And I did it for years for free. I I did it and created my program. And uh, my best friend was like, girl, you always trying to get somebody to put some course online. Like, you don't even notice that you do that. I was like, no, (laughs) no, I don't, you know, because we overlook it. We don't even realize it. When it comes easy, we dismiss it. Yeah, we're looking for... The hard. I think some of that too, though, I'll have to say, especially as a Black woman, I've always heard that I had to work hard, twice as hard, three times as hard to be half as good. 
like even without it's not something that my mom specifically said, but it's like an undertone, right? And and just in school and in so many areas that we have to work twice as hard. So when you find your flow and you are literally operating in your God-given gifts and it's not hard, we question. We're like, "Uh uh-uh, this can't be the thing, right? And then if we don't make money tomorrow, we're the like, see, I didn't make money. Like, it can't be the thing. And it's like, no, well, you also need consistency. (laughs) You also need to stick with it. I've been watching you be super consistent. So I have a couple things. Mm-hmm. What I've seen most in the community is, and you know this, we are such a supportive community in Purpose to very, Platform, right? Very. Like super supportive. But you've really kind of risen to the top as like, go to Lacey. I'd be like, yes, child, go to Lacey. Lacey will help you. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. And for a while I was like, y'all better stop telling people to come to me. But it was because, you know, genuinely, I'm a helper. I'm a helper. I want to see everybody succeed. I want to see people use their gifts and shine and not have to struggle through anything. If I can help you, I'm stepping in to do so. And so, you know, it'll be somebody that'll be like, oh my God, I'm struggling here. Girl, come on, call me. Yeah. Let, 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 record it though, because I ain't going to take notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I got you. And it was this, it was really genuine. And what I wasn't expecting was that outpour of support of people sharing like, oh, Lacey, help me with this. I'm like, hey, some lady DM me like, and she mentioned you to, you know, one of the ladies. I'm like, what happened? She's like, oh yeah, I shared that. I was like, for me? Yeah. You know, for me? But that's what real community is. That's what I try to explain to people about P2P. We don't foster a community of just random bodies in a Facebook group. Like we foster sisterhood. Yes. Yes. I have sisters now like that. I can't wait for this COVID to be over because I I got sisters all over the world now that I have (laughs) to go see and touch and hug and say thank you to and say congratulations to. And this community really, you know, feeling unsupported. And I know that I'm not alone in that when you try to do something and your friends don't understand, your family don't understand, and you get in a community of people who are like, girl, I've been going through that too. Mm -hmm. And really resonating with your story, your journey, and what it is you want to do. Mm -hmm. That was so surreal. I mean, I definitely cried over the relationship, the support, the, I, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It is. It's it is one of those things you have to kind of experience. Like it's hard to even really put into words, but yeah. the love is so real so quickly that I know for some people it could probably be overwhelming. They're like, are these people for real? But we start out with the end in mind and creating yeah. that type of environment. So yeah. I just love to see women like you that just come and add to it. So we do what we can do as coaches, but when you're willing to give of yourself in the way that you have in that P2P community. It just takes it to the next level to where, you know, everyone can feel supported all over the world, like you said. Yeah. And I I believe that gave other women, you know, kind of permission to step out and start doing things. I was like, hey, you know, I even started shouting out people who would DM me but wouldn't say anything in the group. Hey, everybody, meet so-and-so. I saw that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, because, I mean, number one, these women are amazing, period, and just have so much to offer the world. It's like uh, the amount of knowledge and wisdom that's in that group. I'm like, ma'am, can you please help me? Like, yeah. you know, let we can really, really help each other. Um, hands down, you know, yeah. I, I, I just, I just have to give you an applause on that community piece. That was what was missing in a lot of people's life. And for you to create something, intentionally create something that was what you needed at one time, because you Mm -hmm. knew that if you had that, you would be able to get there, to get to your purpose sooner, quicker, faster. And that's what I see happening. People are like, okay, oh my God, I'm I'm doing this tomorrow. I'm just going to do it. I know. They're launching left and right. It's so exciting. Okay. So speaking of that, getting there sooner, quicker, faster, you have been getting there. So 
you were like, I got to take a week off. I need to be real with myself about what I'm actually being called to do. And then you resurfaced and you were like, y'all, I've been playing. I know I said I was here for that, but I really feel like I'm here for this. And then I just saw you doing Facebook lives, posting stuff. You're like, I launched the thing. I got new clients. Okay. So take, so tell us about specifically what you do now yeah. and who you do it for. Because at one point you had did a million things in eight days. So just take us through that whole journey. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it too, right? All right. So uh, let me just <clears throat> formally introduce myself. I'm Lacey Fields, the course mentor, and I help purpose-driven women create transformational courses using their story. Oh, <laughs> you better get it. Okay. And so why using their story specifically? Because that's, that's a very unique twist there. Why is the story so important before you launch a course or do anything online? Yeah, right. So I'll give you like a really quick example. Say you have somebody who has like 20 years customer service experience, right? And she's like, oh, I'm going to do a course for like $99. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cute. But then you talk to her and you get into her story and you find out that she became the number one customer service person in her company and started doing all these things because when her kids were young and her marriage was new, she was on the brink of divorce because she was allowing people at work to, you know, bring her down. And what she did in the process was she went to counseling. She started meditating. She implemented boundaries in her life. That that's a course. Right. That is a premium course where you have lessons for somebody to use so that they can now separate home and work. So that's not just a customer service course, ma'am. That is a life changing strategy for people to keep their marriage. <laughs> you know, yes. it's always so much bigger. Right. And that's what yeah. I used to tell people, Lacey, this is not about budgeting. I'm changing your behavior. I'm changing your mindset around money. You may think you want to learn how to budget, but that's going to be one small piece. This is transformation. I love that. Yes, yes. Transformation, changing lives. You know, I mean, if, if I'm going to, like coming to P2P was life changing, life changing. I am, I look back and I am not the same person 10 weeks later. Wow. Right. I want that for other people. So that's why I'm like, I'm going to help these women really get deeper into their story so that they can meet people where they were, right? Meet a person where you were when you were in your lowest moment, not just start something in the middle and get them some tools and tactics. Nah, babe, we need to go back to that real pain before we can transform you, before we can make anything happen. You can't just be adding sugar on top of that stuff, you know, you can't mix <laughs> all that up. You have to dig a little deeper so that you can, you know, have more to give and have and, and see more results. Yeah, because ultimately, if it's going to be transformational, you have to be able to replicate results like you're trying to take people through those steps that will get them, like you said, from where they were to where you are. Mm -hmm. Right. They have yeah. to see the path there. So. What happened for you? So you got clarity and you were like, this is what I'm doing. This is who I'm serving. And then you and start then, accepting payments. Like, what, like what, let's talk about that. <laughs> <sighs> let's get into this here testimony, okay? Because it was like, all right, I'm doing this. And I saw the value. And once I realized that this is what I was supposed to do, let's, okay, let's get to work. Let's get to work. You know, I learned from watching Patrice. We're going to make this a thing thing. <laughs> you know, let's make it a thing. And I, I, I just I just did it. Um, someone said, hey, can I talk to you? And they were like, you know, I, I want you to do it. I want you to help me build this course. I was like, all right, let me um, get this invoice together for you. You'll have it in about five minutes. I had Wait, to go. Wait, Lacey, <laughs> did yeah. you have a fancy website? Let's get down to this. I didn't have a website. I didn't have a landing page. First of all, I didn't even have a PayPal to take this lady money. All right. And then I was using a free trial to create the invoice. <laughs> and like that same day, I had ran out of my like free stuff. 
So then I had to pay these people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> while PayPal holding my money, but I had nothing. It was, I had this work, I had this gift, and I was willing to use it. That's what I had. I had the willingness to do the thing. Yeah. And I did the thing. I mean, and you the did person, the thing. Yeah. I made more in a week than I would in a month working at my job. I think you should say that one more time. I made more. Let's, let's, let's break it all the way down. I made more in four days of launching a business that I had nothing to. Okay. No landing page, no nothing. Four days. I made more money in four days than I would going to work for a full month. In the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. When people are saying stuff like, this is not the time, you know, I'm not ready. I don't have all the things. I don't have my website. I'm still waiting on my logo. And what is our famous saying in P2P? What do we do? Sloppy progress. Sloppy progress. Sloppy progress. Because once you're clear about who you are, and who you serve, there are so many ways to reach your people that don't require you to pay anything or to build anything. No, no. And the thing, the thing was, I believed that. I believed that. And so when I started doing the work, I was like, Patrice said, just do it. You don't need that. I mean, that's cute. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't really need it. All I needed was that PayPal. Let me tell you, within four minutes, it was like invoice 222, (laughs) right? PayPal set up at 224, (laughs) paid at 226, right? (laughs) That's how it is. And I literally took screenshots of all of it. And I did. I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I got them receipts. (laughs) Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad because... I think that's one of the biggest things that blocks brilliant women from making the bank they deserve to make is this, this like so consumed with perfection and the idea that you must have all the things before you do anything. And we're just like, can we test it out? Can we talk about it publicly? Can we see what the people want? Can we see if they like it? Can we see if it works? Like, you want to spend a year putting together all this stuff that no one may want. And yeah. we're saying, let's get clarity. Let's dig deep, ask the questions, put it out there and see what happens. And more often than not, you're either going to get a PayPal <laughs> invoice. <laughs> like You're either going to get a cha-ching or you're going to get some claps. You're going to get new followers, a new audience, and people are going to start paying attention. And both of those are very good. <laughs> like mm-hmm. We just need to do both of those consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And mind you, I have been off of uh, social media, so I don't have a big following. Right. I don't even have a big following. I just started doing the thing that you said to do. Okay. It was like, do this. All right, cool. All right. Okay. It didn't work that time. Okay. Let me do it again. Oh, it worked that time. I'm going to keep doing this. (laughs) I'm going to keep doing this. And I was getting DMs from strangers. Mm-hmm. Or people who saying they, I wrote a nonfiction book like in 2014. Mm-hmm. Oh, I bought your book in 2014. Can I talk to you? Yeah, girl, I'm, yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. So how many clients have you gotten to date? Um, I am at 12. Lacey, that is so good. Yeah. It's 12 like, premium clients. This Premium. (laughs) Premium. And you started PCP about 10 weeks ago at this present moment that we're recording. Wow. Yeah, I'm still in the program, (laughs) ma'am. I know. I know. It's so good. It's so good to hear this and just to know. So I just want to make sure for anyone who's listening, though, who may be bound by their story. Because I truly believe that the reason you could help other people and help them go deep with the story is because you finally owned your own story. Yes. And so I think another thing that's just blocking people is they won't own the story. So 
why do we need to own the story? Like what words of encouragement do you have for someone else who might be hiding behind an old story and it's keeping them from, from living their God given purpose? Yeah. So I think that we look at our stories and we look at our life and all we see is the the bad stuff. We see the fall downs, we see the letdowns, we see the breakups, but looking deeper is resilience there. It's triumph there. It's glory there, right? There was grace over your life during that period of time. All right? And my my thing with the story is you have to have a magnifying glass to look at all of those get ups. Yeah, you fell down, but let's put a magnifying glass to when you got up because it was a process. And that is what people need. We need that process. Let me tell you, if I fell down right now, it will still be a process if I just reached up and grabbed somebody's hand and they helped me out. So even if you had a number two or you just standing up and you just got up off the floor, it's somebody who needs your hand to help them get up. And that is why the world needs your story and they need your process. Mm. That's so good. I love it. I love it. All right. I'm so proud of you. Really proud of you. Really proud to highlight you. And there's so much more that you've done. And again, just the way that you've been a blessing to others is just incredible to watch. And I just pray that as your business continue to climb, that you never lose that spirit of, like you said, like reaching back and just helping people and helping them come up and also still knowing your value and owning your value, but supporting others in the process. Um, Before I let you go, I have to ask you some redefining wealth, rapid wisdom questions. First one, how do you define success? (sighs) I define success as doing what you love every single day, period. Yes. How do you define wealth in three words or less? Peace and blessings. Come on. Yes. Peace and blessings. I'm with it. Okay. What's one book that has helped you redefine how you see wealth? See You at the Top by Zig Ziglar. Oh, I haven't read that. It's good. And it it aligns with with, you know, your platform as well, because he goes over every pillar of life and it's biblically sound. So he gives you biblical principles and just how to navigate every area of your life to be successful. Oh, I love it. No, no one's ever said that. So we'll have to link to that in the show notes. Okay, cool. And fill in the blank. Uh, My name is, and the truth about wealth is. (laughs) My name is Lacey Fields and the truth about wealth is, It is measured by the love you have for what you do. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it, Lacey. So proud of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing just a smidge of your story, but I know there's so much more and we definitely want people to come check you out in social media and just see what you're up to. You're absolutely incredible. and Your heart is solid gold. Thank you so much. I I wouldn't be here without you saying yes, Patrice. So I definitely have to let you know. Thank you. Thank you. None of this would have been possible if you would have kept your story to yourself. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here. Oh, thanks, sis. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Yes. Second day down. I just love, again, how Lacey has been so willing to support so many in the program. And I really think that the reason she's been able to get so many clients outside of the program is because she's been in service. And that is so important. Like that is such a big piece because I really think before you can fully be paid what you know your worth and what your value is for your purpose, that you really get to, or you should, at least I did, I think this is the way to go. I'm just going to say what I did. I really perfected my voice by helping and serving others. I really found my way in the doing, not in the hypothesizing. And what I loved with Lacey is that her brand as the course mentor really 
became more and more clear while she was in Purpose to Platform because of how she was showing up to support others. And you know, I'm a fan of using your story. Uh, You know, I truly believe in using your story. And so many people hide the story, don't want to share the story, are ashamed of the story. And I know that it's hard. I know that it's difficult. But in order to really transform people, you have to connect to them first. You have to relate to them. They have to know that, You are a walking, talking example of what's possible for them. And if you come off as just perfect, goody two shoes, you know, never had a problem, never did anything, never experienced some raggedy time in your life, like we don't relate. (laughs) My life has been so tumultuous that I don't relate to people who say they've had a perfect everything, perfect children, spouse, upbringing, parents, like good for you does not speak to me at all. And so I love that Lacey helps people dig into the story so that they can be more impactful with their courses. So, so needed, so, so proud of her and just grateful again for another incredible woman in the P2P community. So if you want more information about Purpose to Platform, the door is open in December. I think you should get on the wait list. It's at Purpose2Platform.com. Purpose2Platform.com. Come check us out. Get on the wait list. Find these women. You can ask them questions about what their experience was. But I just continue to be in awe of everything that they did in such a short period of time. So until tomorrow, we'll be back with another incredible woman from Purpose to Platform. Until then, make sure you check out all of Lacey's links in the show notes and I'll see you in social media. Tell me how you're enjoying these episodes. Until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment and earn more without ever chasing money. Talk to you later.